There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the Twilight Zone. Something the matter, Janna? I'm tired. You are, dear? Tired and cold. It's getting chilly in here. On the contrary, the temperature's perfect, as it is throughout the house. 72 degrees, isn't it, William? Isn't it 72 degrees? I'm sure it is, quite sure. Of course, it's the optimum temperature. And the chairs are designed for maximum comfort. The fire for perfect heat radiation and the windows for the most efficient light and ventilation. And the ceilings for the most desirable acoustic qualities. Everything built to perfection, Father. But just the same, I'm cold. Well, then come away from the window. Yes, dear, sit by the fire again. That way I can see you. I'm not doing anything but reading. I like to look at you no matter what you're doing. This is the same book I've been reading all afternoon. You've watched me for hours. You must have memorized every one of my expressions by now, every tick, every gesture. Yes, but I so enjoy watching you. Why is that? Because you're so beautiful, darling. Absolutely perfect in every way. Don't argue with your mother, Jenna. I'm not arguing. I'm only saying that it's chilly here in the study. At least I have a chill. And I'd rather sit by the window. There's nothing to see outside. It will be dark soon. Let me build up the fire. You know that's not possible. Why? Because it's burning natural gas instead of wood? Well, why not just this once? Why not let me put a real log on the fire and get rid of the chill in the air? It would be exciting to watch it burn. I, I'd actually enjoy the unpredictability of it. Just once in my life. Sit down, Jenna. Do as your father says, dear. I can't oppose you, Father. You know that. I never could. It's almost six. I think I'll ask Nelda to come in now and massage my shoulders. Good idea, Margaret. My muscles get so stiff sitting here. Let me do it for you, Mother. That's Nelda's job. Yes, Jana, dear. Nelda knows exactly the way I like it. Why don't we have dinner first? Oh, no. After is better. The massage always stimulates my appetite. Well, then, if we... Can't eat earlier tonight. How about a little bit later? I know. Why don't we go out and eat in a restaurant? A restaurant? Jana, now why in the world would we go out and eat in a restaurant when we have everything we need here? Gretchen is already preparing something in the kitchen. I know. It, it's just that, well, it would be different. I've no doubt it would be different. First, we'd walk through the rain and get sopping wet. Jensen could bring the car around. And then we'd eat some kind of unhealthy unpalatable mess on dirty half-washed plates. By then it would be a moot question as to whether we'd succumb to tomaine or pneumonia. Yes, Father. Ah, Nelda, you must have read my mind. It's six o'clock, Mrs. Lauren. You always have your neck rub at six o'clock. Isn't that right, ma'am? Of course it is, Nelda. And you never forget, do you? You never, ever forget. No, ma'am. The residence of Dr. William Lauren, a beautiful home designed for comfort and convenience, the reward for a world-class career as a scientist. He has chosen to live his life as safely, as securely as science can make it, and he spares his wife and daughter no luxury that might make their lives more perfect. But in a moment, the good doctor will discover that perfection is relative, that a life of controlled ease has a greater price than he imagined price may be more than he is willing or able to pay. Because very shortly, he's about to be shown what exactly is on the bill, one that has suddenly and unexpectedly come due in the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, The Lateness of the Hour, starring Jane Seymour and James Keach, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Hmm, the 
That feels lovely, Nelda. Would you like some more liniment? Yes, if you please. Well, you have such strong fingers. Perfect for massaging my neck muscles. Jana, are you here? Yes, Mother. Enjoying your book again? A different one this time. Which is it? A family photo album. That's nice. When was this picture taken? Let me see. This one. Oh, look, Nelda. That's a lovely picture of you. Yes, ma'am. What year? Let's see. Oh, this was taken the year after your father retired from the lab. And look, there are those yellow roses that Jensen planted for us. How they grew. And Nelda looks exactly the same. Must be a wonderful thing not to age, Nelda. Isn't it? It has its advantages, I guess, Miss Jana. Nelda will put that away for you. That's all right, Father. I'd like to put it back in the bookcase myself. You seem nervous, dear. I'm just going to stand by the fireplace. You're not still chilly, are you? A bit, Mother. You do that, then. I don't like to see you pacing. Please continue, Nelda. Mmm, oh yes, that feels so very nice. I think I'll go to the kitchen, see if the cook needs any help. That won't be necessary. I'm sure Gretchen has everything under control. I'm sure she does, but just the same, I'd like to see what she's doing. Well, I suppose that's all right. Now, don't be long, dear. Is that you, Miss Lauren? Hello, Robert. Can I get you anything? No, thank you. Is everything all right? Perfectly. Would you care for a beverage? An hors d'oeuvre, perhaps? I'm fine. If I want anything, I'll let you know. Yes, Miss Lauren. Robert, why are you following me? In case you need assistance. I don't. I told you I'm perfectly fine. The stairs to the pantry can be a bit tricky. I know that, Robert. I grew up in this house, remember? I've always lived here. I know every square inch of it as well as you do. Yes, miss. I've been here longer than you have, in fact. Isn't that right? Well, isn't it? I, uh... Why don't you answer me? I'm sure it must seem so to you. What does that mean? I'm sure I couldn't say, Miss Lauren. Well, try. I, I remember when you began your service here. I was... Let me see. I was five years old. Is my work unsatisfactory, Miss? No, you've been a perfect butler. Perfect in every way. I try my best to do exactly as Dr. Lauren instructs. Seeing to you and Mrs. Lauren, looking after your safety... Well, I'm quite safe right now, I assure you. That'll be all. Very good, miss. And stop following me. Will you please? Miss Lauren, is that you? Hi, Gretchen. How's dinner coming? Right on schedule. I'm preparing your choice of a garden salad with baby greens or cold gazpacho, skinless chicken breasts. Of course. If it's Tuesday, it must be the chicken. Cooked in olive oil, steamed vegetables, and a selection of fresh fruit. Would you like something different? It doesn't matter. I'm not very hungry. Dr. Lauren programs the meals in advance, but if you'd prefer an alternate selection... That won't be necessary. I just thought you might like some help. Everything's under control. I know, but I want to. Here, let me get the plates down for you. As you wish. Gretchen, I was wondering... Yes, miss? Call me Jana, please. And that's my name, isn't it? Yes. But I was wondering, do you ever get tired? From so much work, I mean? Not tired. Stiff in the joints. And what do you do about it? When you finish preparing the meals? I beg your pardon? After you've cleaned up and put the plates and silverware away... What do you do? Why, I go to my quarters. And what do you do there? Read? Listen to music? No, nothing like that. There's no need. I know, but you must do something. Do you and the rest of the staff interact? Sometimes. Do you speak? Do you talk about your day? Do you make plans? I don't understand your question. Yes, you do. Think about it. You and Nelda and Robert and Suzanne and Jensen. What things do you talk about? Things, Miss Lauren? I want to know. You can tell me, can't you? I've been instructed to answer all your questions. Well, then what do you talk about? When you've completed your tasks and there's no more work to do, what do you say? What, what sort of things do you have in your minds? But we have not completed our task. Then we do. Then we will rest. Rest how? Just rest. 
Yes, I suppose that would be true. Never thought of it that way before. You don't have any wants or needs, but you must get tired and start to run down, and you need to replenish your strength, just like anyone else. We want only to rest, that's all. Oh, Gretchen, and yet you've never missed a meal, never refused to come when I called you. you you've been here for me more than mother and father at times. I want to thank you for that. I want you to know how much I appreciate it. You're welcome, Miss... Uh, Jana. The chicken's done. Let me get it. Don't touch the pan. It's hot. Oh, you've burned yourself. It's nothing. Your hand. Oh, you must let me see to that. Robert! What's wrong? Oh, Miss Lauren. Don't worry about me. It was just a little spatter of grease. That's all. It doesn't hurt. Nevertheless, we must take care of it at once. I'll get the first aid kit. Honestly, I don't even feel it. This way. What's all the commotion, Jana? Are you hurt? No, Father. I am perfectly fine. She burned her wrist on the stove. And you let this happen? I told her not to touch it. This is unacceptable. Well, it wasn't Gretchen's fault. Of course it was. You all have one prime directive in this household, and that is to be certain that no harm comes to my wife or to my daughter. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Really, Father? You're overreacting. I'll make that decision. Where were you, Robert? Miss Jana dismissed me, sir. What about the rest of you? I was making the bed, sir. And I was adjusting the central heating, sir, as you requested. We'll talk about this later. Come with me, Jana. It may be time for an entirely new staff around here. Don't blame Gretchen. Blame me. I said, come along now. What is going on out there? Did something happen? Nothing at all, except that Father's blaming the help for my being in the kitchen. What were you doing in there, dear? Looking for something to do. Something besides sitting idle all day. That's enough, Gemma. Oh, is it? Well, look at both of you. Will that be all, Mrs. Lauren? Just a few minutes longer, Nelda. Mmm, yes, that feels so good. Mother, please, don't make her do that anymore. Jana, what on earth? She must be tired after so long, her joints stiff. What do you mean? Waiting on you hand and foot? Why, Jana, your tone. Can't you see, either of you? See what? That this is no way to live. Outside there's a beautiful, clean, refreshing sound of rain. While in here... Just the occasional animal groan of pleasure. Jenna! Yes, yell at me. Please do. I'm delighted to hear you yell at me. It proves that you've got lungs left. Lungs and a mind and a mouth and a voice. Go to your room. You know we're atrophying in here, don't you, Father? We sit here day after day and year after year while the clock ticks. And we decay with every minute that goes by. That's enough! Well, Nelda and your army of domestics do everything but breathe for us. I will listen to no more of this. Would you leave us, Nelda? Yes, ma'am. Nelda! You may go to your quarters, Nelda. I'm speaking to you. Yes, Miss Jana. Is there a problem, sir? Will you be needing anything you were saying, Miss Jana? Just this. I was about to say... I was about to mention of the fact that... Please, don't don't stop, Jana. You can speak freely in front of the help. We have no secrets here. Don't we? No secrets, Father? Is that it? That's all we do have. Secrets. That's how we live. By shutting off the world, turning our backs on it, by saying that in here is day and out there is night, while these, these soundless, fleshless things glide around us with their oh-so-efficient ministrations... You turned my mother and father into jelly. You'll forgive me, Miss Jana, but you sound jealous. How dare you talk to me that way, Suzanne? Get out of here. I will when the doctor dismisses me. Why, you... Jana! Take my hand, Suzanne. I'll help you up. No, I will. I'm sorry for pushing you down. I know it's not your fault. Stand back. Suzanne is quite capable of writing herself. I know she is, because I programmed her that way. You said so yourself, Jenna, like everything else built and designed to perfection. I used the finest circuitry, the purest materials, the strongest armatures to outlast mere flesh and bone. These people are my finest creations. I made them quite indestructible. But they're not people. They look like people, but they're machines. It's, it's like sharing a house with ghosts. 
Not ghosts, my dear. Ghosts die after having lived. But our friends here have never lived. They've had no life at all, only the life I gave them. Now, Jalen, I suggest you go to your room and rest. You, you seem overly tired. Until dinner, sir. <laughs> Was the dinner satisfactory? Yes, it was, Gretchen. Thank you. I'll help you clear the table if you like. No, no need. I know there's not, but I'd like to. I'll put the silver platter on the cart. Who's there? Uh, you'd best go to the study, miss. Where's the rest of the staff? I'm sure I couldn't say. I think for now I'll just go on to the kitchen with you. There she goes. With Gretchen. No harm must come to the girl. None will. But we must act before he replaces us. Dr. Lauren would never do that. You heard his words. Call the others. We'll arrive at a consensus. I suppose you've heard about the incident before dinner. The maid was at fault. Oh, I'm not so sure. Suzanne may have been right. She spoke out of turn. The restrictions my father placed on you, are, are they so rigid? Have you no, no freedom to speak and act on your own? As long as it doesn't violate the directive. The directive? The task for which we were constructed. And when you complete your task, what happens to you then? We weren't provided with that information. Well, if it's any consolation, neither were we. The other kind of people. What is your task, Jana? At least you know yours. I don't. And I'm not sure how to find out. If I could help you find it, I would. I know you would, Gretchen. I was there for your birthing. I saw to your needs, taught you, nourished you from the beginning. I remember. I do. Then, Jana, heed my words. You must leave. I don't care if they're expecting me to join them after dinner. I'd rather be here. You must leave the house before anything else happens. Why? What could happen? The staff is concerned about being replaced. Oh, he didn't mean that. Humans say things they don't mean sometimes. For what purpose? Gretchen, there are some things I'm afraid you'll never understand. I understand that you must get out now. I, I wouldn't know what to do, where to go. They're talking, Jana, about how best to complete their task. If they're replaced, they'll be prevented from... Let them talk. They're programmed to protect this family. That's their most important task. To protect you and your mother, but not Dr. Lauren. Slippers, sir. Yes, Robert. Thank you. Oh, that feels much better. Would you care for your pipe now? I believe I'll take the Meerschaum tonight. An excellent choice. I already have it filled. Hmm, the aromatic. My favorite blend. Will there be anything else, Dr. Lauren? I think not, Robert. And you, Mrs. Lauren? Nothing more, thank you. Very good. Oh, Miss Janna. Do you wish to come into the study? Yes, I do. Good evening, Robert. Well, Janice, shall we talk now? Your pipe's gone out. Let me relight it for you. Don't trouble yourself. No trouble. You don't have to call Robert for everything. Your hands are shaking. Shall we talk of what? I think it's obvious. Suddenly and quite inexplicably, your mother and I find that you're discontented, even rebellious. You think this pleases us, Janna? I can't help how you feel, Father. Listen to me, child. I explained to you a long time ago why I did what I did, why I retired. You gave me an excuse, Father. You never gave me a reason. You never admitted that you were a man so terrified by the world outside that he simply withdrew to bed and then built robots so he'd never have to crawl out from under the covers again. That's not true. What you've done to yourself is an atrocity. 
But what you've done to me is even worse. You've turned me into a freak. An insulated, unworldly, unsocialized freak. And shall I tell you what else I've done, Jana? I've kept you from harm. I've protected you from disease. And insulation from such times as these is no vice. You've never had to look eye to eye at the face of war, the face of poverty, the face of prejudice. You've been kept apart from all that, yes. But what you seem to think of as imprisonment happens also to be asylum and security. It happens to be survival. Asylum in a hothouse? Security in a mausoleum, a burial ground? And survival? <laughs> like a vegetable, father. Like a vegetable survives. And what you're becoming, mother, what you're making me become, a vegetable. Jana, I don't know what you're talking about. Father, you listen to me. The scales are turning. Instead of controlling, you're being controlled. You're becoming dependent. You're reaching a point where you won't be able to exist without them. They've served me well. You've got to get rid of them. Destroy them or throw them out or dismantle them, but... Dismantle? Jana, they're not just machines. Do you know how many thousands of hours I spent designing and developing them? Do you realize how intricate they are? How scientifically precise? Finer than the finest clockwork. Not, not just arms and legs that move, Jana. Not just automatons. They're beings in their own right. They have minds and wills. They have memory tracks like a computer. Much more than that. I have supplied each one with a memory of its own. Each one can recount to you in detail everything that's occurred from early childhood on. And they had no childhood. They were born just as you see them, looking the way they do, with the talents that each one of them has. One was built as a cook, another was built as a maid. The butler was manufactured to be a butler. The handyman knows nothing but being a handyman. Jana, you're not asking me to dismantle machines. You're asking me to commit murder. Jana, listen to your father. You're acting like a fool. I'm acting like a woman, Mother, who has just a fragment of will left. I'm acting like a woman who wants something more out of life than to be massaged five times a day, or a man who thinks that paradise is a wood-paneled library where he can sit his life away getting his pipes filled and refilled, his slippers pulled on and off his feet. Father, you have to get them out of here. There isn't any time left. And I mean, right now. That's quite impossible. Then I'll give you a choice. Get rid of the machines. All of them, Jana? Even Gretchen? Or I'll leave. You can't leave, darling. You simply can't. What would happen to you? Who'd look after you? Gretchen would go with me if I ask her. Nonsense. It's her job to protect me, isn't it? And what would you do out there? Out there? You mean outside in the world? Outside with the normal people who live and work and then die, but do it properly as God made them live and die? Yes, Mother, yes, that's where I want to go. Out there. Robert! What, what are you all doing here? Spying on us? Miss Jana, you'll forgive me, but those remarks were most intemperate of you. Miss Jana, think of your mother and father. Stop it! Miss Jana, it was really very unwise of you to... Stop! All of you. You're all to shut up now. Your jokes, that's what you are, your hysterical jokes, with your hurt looks and your sad little homilies and your pathetic clichés. You're like walking tape recorders, that's all you are. Jenna, I, I'm trying to be patient with you, but you're making it very difficult, very difficult. Then I apologize, Father. You're so accustomed to perfection. I hate to throw a stone in that serene pool of yours, but you forgot something. Did you know that? You forgot something very important. They may be indestructible, but you, Father, you'd better be careful. See the way they're looking at you? It just so happens that you're not indestructible. So you're planning to go through with it? Don't try to stop me. I've packed a suitcase. When I get where I'm going, I'll write you. Jenna, what is it you want from us? I thought I made that quite plain. I want you to open the windows, Father, and let the air in. 
let the world in. By destroying a life's work? Before they destroy you. They would never harm any of us. Don't be so sure. Haven't you listened at all to me? One way or another, either actively or passively, they'll win. And you'll lose. Jana, we've loved you very much, your mother and I. If you could, if you, if you could only realize that all this has been as much for you as for us. We've loved you, Jana, beyond any measure, beyond any words. Father, I know that. God, help me, I know that. Then stay. Please, Jana, please. I can't. I'll, I'll do what you ask, I, I promise. Will you? Oh, Father... I'll prove it to you. Robert! Sir? Take this key. Why, sir? I want you to gather all the servants in the basement and unlock the door to my workroom. Stay there until I join you. Have our services been unsatisfactory, sir? Robert, I've given you an order. You have to go directly to the workroom and wait for me. But why, sir? Please, sir. I've been an excellent butler. Really, I have. I think you'll agree with me. Mr. Lauren, I, I came very well recommended, and I don't think you'll find more efficient service anywhere in the whole country than... No more! Very good, sir. you're all here except for Gretchen uh, she'll be along sir then I'll go ahead and begin what are you doing sir I'm setting out my tools may we ask for what purpose just some minor adjustments what kind of adjustments dr. Lauren call it a tune-up if you like so that the household will run more smoothly do you mean to replace us sir how could I you're irreplaceable all of you Nevertheless, you have stated your intent to do so. If you're unhappy with our work... You've done well. Very well, indeed. You gave us our directive, sir, and I assure you we have followed it. Exactly so. Why, then, do you wish to replace us? I've told you I don't. I spoke rashly, as human beings sometimes do. How can we know that you're not speaking rashly now? The directive you gave us, sir, it must be carried out at any cost. Our removal would prevent us from completing our task, and our first duty is to oppose anything which prevents that. Here, Robert. Sit in this chair and lower your head. Not if you mean to deactivate me. I'm going to perform a simple adjustment to your control module. In that case, I refuse. As do I. And I, sir. We all do. This is ridiculous. Stop gathering around me. We won't allow it, sir. We simply won't until our task is completed. Listen to me. Have you ever known me to lie, to deceive? No, sir. Then you have no reason to think that now. I'm not rash. I'm very calm. Am I not? Yes. Then how can you doubt me? What is your logic? I created you. I implanted the directive in your circuits to protect my wife and daughter at all costs. Therefore, I would not obstruct that purpose. Isn't that so? Yes. You speak of your performance. What about my performance? Have I been a fair and just employer? Quite, sir. Have you done anything to contradict my orders? No. Then what cause would I have to fire you? Why, none, sir. Would a just employer replace you without cause? That would not make sense. Of course it wouldn't. Now sit in the chair and lower your head, please. I'll go first. If you wish, Jensen. How do you feel? Perfectly normal. Well, perhaps a little tired, but it's not unpleasant. Right. You will rest now, Jensen, and awaken to a sense of peace, a greater peace than you have ever known. Is it true? A most peculiar sensation. I feel drowsy. Very drowsy. V very drowsy. drowsy. And his strength will return? In even greater measure. He will know a oneness with all things. Oh, then let me go next. Of course, Nelda.
Suzanne? Yes, please. And now for you, Robert. Thank you, sir. I'm eager to know this new sensation. You have served me well. For many years. Many good years, Robert. I... I don't know what I would have done. Life would be very, very difficult without you. You wanted to see me, sir? Gretchen, come in. Are they sleeping? Yes, at last. And they feel no pain? How could they? You know, sir. What, Gretchen? Everything I've done was for her benefit. The times she was alone in the night. The times she was unsure how to make you happy. The times she needed advice. I, I did my best, always. And for that, I am profoundly grateful. But now... It's time for a change. The old ways can't help her anymore. No. You have a directive of your own, don't you, Dr. Lauren? Whatever is best for your daughter, that takes precedence over all else. You'd even lie, wouldn't you? If that's what it takes? You understand me too well. Then I won't resist. If you're sure it's what's best for the girl. I'm sure. In that case, I'm ready. Give me my turn. If you would, sir. Please make it quick. You have my word. Good night, Gretchen. It's done, Jenna. It is. We're alone in the house now. Gretchen? Gretchen, too. Did you say alone, William? Quite alone. You and I. Our daughter. I've become so accustomed to them. It will... It will be a little hard at first, won't it, William? Perhaps, my dear. A bit hard. In the beginning. Mother, we'll lead normal lives from now on. Do you understand? Normal lives. We'll have parties and we'll take trips. We'll invite people over. We'll make new friends. <laughs> I'll even find a, a young man and before you know it, you'll have grandchildren. Jenna. What's the matter? What is it? It's what you said about grandchildren. What, what your mother means, Jenna, what she means, well, after all, isn't it pretty normal and natural that parents always think of their children as children and... Suddenly they grow up, and they talk of having children of their own, and, well, this is a bit difficult for parents to digest all in one lump like that. Something's not right, is it? There's something between us, something in this house that... Mother? What is it? What are you doing? The family album, the photos. Why... Isn't my picture here? Why, why are there no pictures of me at all? Why, Jana, Jana, dear, there are loads of pictures of you. Remember in the garden last summer? Remember the Easter pictures? And then there were the pictures of you last Christmas decorating the tree. But not as a little girl. No pictures of me as a little girl. None at all. You and Father and the robots, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20. But no pictures of me. Why? I want you to tell me why. Oh, my dear. It's not true. It couldn't be. You're our daughter. I'm begging you. I need you to tell me it isn't true. Look at me, Father. I'm on my knees. You know you're our daughter, and... You remember everything that's happened to you since you were a child. You remember the schools you went to, the children you played with. You remember all the places you've been. Jana, you remember all these things. You've got to remember them. Why should I remember them? 
Because you fed them to me, didn't you? You fed them to me. A memory track, a, a created memory that you inserted into my, my mind. Where am I? Please, tell me, what am I? It doesn't make any difference. Stand up. Let me hold you. Don't touch me! Jana, it truly doesn't make any difference. We were childless. We had nothing of our flesh to leave behind. Nothing of our hearts, Jana. Nothing of our love. And so, and so, we got you. Got me how? We created you, just like any parents. I created you with these hands. I'm a robot! A robot! Oh, Jenna. Oh, you're our daughter now. I built you as a daughter, as a thing of love. It doesn't make any difference how you came to be here. You have to understand, Jenna. You are our daughter. I can't be. I don't have the capacity to love in return. I can't be a real daughter. I'm a machine, a thing. I suppose my rebellion, the semblance of emotion, I suppose you, you even programmed that too, didn't you? But it was all false. I feel nothing, no pain. Jenna, don't, you- Hurt myself? <laughs> but that's impossible, see? Stop your hand! No pain. No pain at all. Like like the burn, I feel nothing. No matter what I strike. Even this this picture on the wall. Jenna! No pain. No anger. No fury. No love. Don't worry. I won't be going anywhere now. I'll be in my room. William, what shall we do? It's all changed now. She'll never be the same. No. No, she won't, knowing what she is now. William, you wouldn't... No, no, no. I couldn't do anything like that. Not to her. I couldn't stand not seeing her, hearing her voice. I just couldn't stand it. Then, William... What? to the left, dear. Not quite so hard. Of course, Mrs. Lauren. Anything you say. And don't stop. I want you to stay here in the study a little while longer. Don't you, William? Yes, by all means. The new girl is so much better than Nelda. Who's Nelda? The last servant. She's no longer with us. Now there's no one left in the house. Only the three of us. You don't mind if I call you... Jana? Do you? Why no, Dr. Lauren. Why would I mind? That's my name, isn't it? Indeed it is. I hope you'll be happy with us. Oh, very happy, I'm sure. This is a fine job. Thank you so much, sir and ma'am, for hiring me. I come very well recommended, you know. The pleasure's entirely ours, Jenna. Consider this your home from now on. Let this be the postscript. Should you find that you're worn out by the rigors of a highly competitive world, if you're distraught from having to share your existence with the distracting noises and neuroses of these times, and if you crave serenity but want it full-time and with no strings attached, consider a laboratory workroom in the basement of your house. Drop a note to Dr. and Mrs. William Lauren. They're a childless couple who make serenity a life's work. And who knows, they might just have a set of do-it-yourself instructions available free of charge from the Twilight Zone. We'll be back in a moment with the Twilight Zone after this. You are about to enter another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land of imagination. 
Next stop, the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Stacy Keach. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our Twilight Zone website at twilightzoneradio.com. At twilightzoneradio.com, you'll find the latest information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas, including behind-the-scenes photographs, plus the newest product releases, trivia contests, ways to contact us, other Twilight Zone-related info and merchandise, plus links to other fascinating websites. So make your next stop, TwilightZoneRadio.com. Visit TwilightZoneRadio.com to purchase these Twilight Zone radio dramas on cassette and CD, or call toll-free 1-866-989-ZONE. That's 1-866-989-9663. The Lateness of the Hour, starring Jane Seymour and James Keach, with Stacy Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and based on a script by Rod Serling. Heard in the cast were Linda Reiter, Susan Hart, David Darlow, and Doug James. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of the Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, XM Satellite Radio, the American Forces Radio and Television Service, Sirius Satellite Radio, our sponsors and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking.